This 69-year-old man has previously undergone hyperopic LASIK followed by cataract surgery, followed by hyperopic LASIK again in an attempt to achieve his original goal of spectacle independence. He was still unhappy with the quality of his vision and had been told at the time of cataract surgery in 2006 that presbyopic correction did not exist. This is an Acrosoft wavefront eye well implanted in an eye with already significant negative spherical aberration. I'm going to explant this and replace it with a non-wavefront accommodating IOL. The edge of the capsule is teased off uh, with a fine-tipped Sinsky hook followed by viscodissection with the Chang hydrodissection cannula. The edge of the acrylic IOL is then lifted using a Kuglin hook and the lens has memory so it's going to stay slightly flexed to allow enough space for the introduction of a cannula and injection of Helon 5 under the anterior, under the uh, intraocular lens to insufflate the capsular bag, protecting it, uh, the posterior capsule, and lifting the intraocular lens. The haptic on screen left is then cut as it appears to be adherent into the capsular bag. and an attempt is made to dial, rotate, and dial out the other haptic. But as you can see here, there's significant resistance to uh, explantation of that haptic. And in the interest of uh, avoiding a zonular dehiscence, we ultimately abandon this tack and instead will cut the haptic as distally as possible bisect the uh, intraocular lens, and then remove each hemisection separately. Uh, and then it appears that the first haptic that we cut was free, so we're going to explant that as well. So now we have an empty capsule bag. We're going to insufflate with Helon 5. And you'll notice that the anterior capsule is quite stiff in contrast to a previously unoperated eye. And so introduction of the wide haptics of the crystal lens are somewhat of a challenge. So it requires some rotation of the lens. Um, and then because this, uh, the haptic-to-haptic -haptic length is quite long, we're going to place Helon 5 on top of the intraocular lens, pressing it toward the back of the capsule and flexing the, um, uh, the hinged area so that the, uh, 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 so that the hinged area is placed um, uh, anteriorly, and then we can rotate uh, the intraocular lens. Uh, the area where that residual haptic is left is not a problem because the hinges of this lens are 90 degrees to it. The patient was happy with this result, and so we turned to the second eye. You can see here that the capsular bag is significantly more unstable, uh, so we're going to use some different techniques here. First, again, we're going to try to rotate the haptic out, but here you can see there's actually about a 3 clock hour zonular dehiscence inferiorly so that um, even though we're using counter-traction uh, against the capsular bag there, ultimately abandon that, uh, that tack, again, cutting the haptic as close to the edge of the capsular rim as possible. And then, uh, instead of completely bisecting the intraocular lens, I'm going to cut it about three-quarters of the way across, leaving the lens intact, and then explanting it through the incision of 2.8 millimeters uh, and um, removing it in basically a single piece minus that small area of haptic that was left behind. Now here, because the capsule bag is so tight and so rigid, I'm rotating the uh, haptics uh, perpendicular to the capsule before introducing it. Again, the crystal lens. And then uh, again, the, with the haptics pointing almost directly up toward the surgeon, uh, we're going to tuck the, each haptic uh, uh, individually uh, to get it into the capsular bag, again with lots of Helon 5 on top. And remember that we had that capsular, uh, that zonular dehiscence, so we're now going to place a capsular tension ring into that area to stabilize the capsular bag in this accommodating IOL. And um, you can see here that while there is still some degree of laxity, the laxity is symmetric all the way around. In other words, there's no uh, pulling toward one side or the other. 
This patient did well and was happy with the ultimate outcome. And was happy with the ultimate outcome.